how does the market react if we wake up on Monday and the FX market opens up Sunday evening in Asia and the North Koreans have done what the foreign minister suggested they might do, which is test the hydrogen bomb? Yes, I mean, you'd certainly have a risk-off market reaction, uh, yen stronger, Korean won weaker, treasury yields lower, kind of typical risk-off behavior. But I think if you look this morning, you know, it's a very mild risk-off. Treasury yields down two basis points, the yen 40 basis points stronger, that, that's almost nothing. Well, Eric, I have a fun chart for you here, and it shows the average daily absolute percent change in the S&P. We know it's been super low uh, right now, but we see a spike, obviously, in the financial crisis. But what I thought was interesting is in the early 60s, when you did have the Cuban Missile Crisis, you did wind up having uh, bigger moves within the equity index. Can we draw a parallel to what the scenario that John pointed out to what we learned from the 60s, or are they just too different? I mean, look, I think that's a long time ago and that, you know, markets have certainly evolved. That being said, there are risks out there. You know, the, to some extent, it is a parallel. It's a geopolitical risk. And so we've been in this very low volatility environment for a long period of time. The market seems relatively complacent about a variety of economic and, in this case, geopolitical risks. So certainly, uh, if things really escalated between the U.S. and North Korea, uh, you could see markets sell off. That being said, if it's just rhetoric, you know, my view is really that markets get desensitized to the same thing over and over again. And I think that's part of the reason we're seeing a smaller reaction uh, this morning than we were even seeing a couple weeks ago. Eric, is it possible there's a deep irony here in the sense that when President Trump was first elected, there's a lot of concern that we would be in a trade war, not a real war, but a trade war with China. And increasingly, as we have to cooperate with China and get them to go along with us, is it actually reassuring in some ways to investors and to markets that, in fact, maybe the U.S. and China can get along with the pr President Trump in the White House? You know, I certainly think one of the big risks you know, heading into the Trump presidency was, as you said, the U.S.-China relationship. But Trump and Xi seem to have a pretty good uh, relationship after that Mar-a-Lago meeting uh, back in the winter. It's, it's, not, it's not been perfect, but it's been pretty good. And I think there is going to be some commonality here in the North Korea relationship. Certainly, uh, you know, China does not want to see North Korea collapse and does not want, you know, U.S. soldiers moving ever closer toward the Chinese border. That being said, they, I think they are increasingly getting fed up uh, with North Korea and China. And so I think they're potentially looking forward to working closer uh, with the U.S.